For as long as Team Fortress 2 has been around, there have always been its fans, dedicated to playing the game, no matter the means they may have. Despite how easily some Source Engine games can be run today on modern hardware, some of us started our TF2 journey on terrible low-end machines, which were capable of doing nothing more than frying an egg. Some users continue to use these low-power machines and suffer through it, simply because they enjoy TF2 just that much. Over the years, though, there have been several advances in terms of performance improvements for TF2, and it's been quite the wild journey. Back when TF2 launched in 2007, the computing landscape was very different. The game's Steam page listed the minimum and recommended CPUs to be a generic 1.7 GHz processor and a Pentium 4 at 3 GHz respectively. Nowadays, a Pentium 4 is leagues behind even the most low-end processor on store shelves, and is even surpassed by Intel Atom CPUs, which are typically used in stuff like mini computers like the Intel NUC. Benchmarks of TF2 from back then had players getting around 83 frames per second with a Core 2 Quad QX6800 and an 8800 GTX graphics card on a 24-player 2-fort server. Considering how outdated and old this hardware is by today's standards, that's quite the impressive number. However, that was upon TF2's release, where weapon unlocks and hats and the like were simply non-existent. Nowadays, I'd be willing to bet that this hardware would struggle to break even 30 FPS in the same scenario. The Source Engine is quite interesting with the way it works sometimes. You see, TF2 is constantly scanning the hard drive for files it needs, and a slow hard drive is an insane bottleneck. In my experience, trying to run modern Team Fortress 2 on a 5400 RPM hard drive is a total shit show. Of course, Valve has taken many steps to remedy the problem already. For starters, the release of Left 4 Dead introduced the VPK file system for easier and faster loading of assets by the engine, and it was implemented into TF2 as of the Steam Pipe update in 2013. Personally, I'd recommend running modern Team Fortress 2 off of a 7200 RPM hard drive or SSD. Back in the day, though, this probably wasn't even an issue. 2007 Team Fortress 2 may look very basic, and, well, that's likely because it is. Without a plethora of alternative hats, misks, weapons, sounds, and particles for the engine to search for and load, the game likely didn't have to refer back to the hard drive nearly as often as its modern-day equivalent does. This was probably one of the many factors that made the game easier to run back then. Eventually, additions to the game started rolling out. April 2008 saw the release of the Gold Rush update, which added payload and three unlockable weapons for the medic. By the end of the year, two similar major updates for the Pyro and Heavy were released as well. Hey, that's three more updates than we get a year nowadays! At this point, players who struggled to run the game upon release were probably starting to feel the burn a little. 2009 held not one, not two, but five unique major updates to the game. In total, these updates added 15 unlockable weapons, 18 new maps to play on, and a whopping 33 new cosmetic items. At this point, users who could barely run the game at low settings a year prior were probably at their wits end. Around this period, a sort of savior came to the world of Team Fortress 2. His name was Chris Down, a competitive player in Europe. He released a couple config files for the game that would set some of TF2's hidden console commands to new values. He had several configs such as high quality, max quality, and DX9 frames, but he was certainly most well known for his max frames config. Chris's name quickly became associated with game performance, and soon enough, word of Chris's configs was spread far across the reaches of the Team Fortress 2 community. I personally started playing TF2 in late 2012, which was around the time that Chris stopped playing in European leagues and stopped releasing config updates. At that time, I was using a low-end $200 laptop that could barely push out a couple frames per second. Chris's configs helped tremendously, and I would recommend his max frames config to friends time and time again. But, of course, I was a very picky kid who often chose eye candy over frame rate. After years of recommending Chris's max frames config to others and upgrading my computer hardware slowly, I caught wind of a new competitor in 2015, Comanglia. Comanglia wrote config files for TF2 like Chris. But the game had changed a bit structurally since Chris's departure. With their knowledge of the game and its inner workings, Comanglia released some configs to bring the ultimate level of performance to what was then-modern TF2. 
I then began to recommend Comanglia's config over Chris's to friends both new and old. Around this point in time, I'd been pondering a CPU upgrade for myself to replace the dated Pentium I had been using. In theory, it would have run games like CSGO borderline acceptably, but TF2 is an entirely different beast, despite both games having the same base engine. I also started to take note of how these configs would put commands together and how each command would affect the game in turn. I started to research TF2's default settings and how I could make a config of my own that wasn't focused on graphics, but rather on creating an acceptable first-time experience for new players. On Thanksgiving of 2015, I started work on TF2 Essentials, my personal config that did just that. A couple months went by, and in March I finally ascended to a quad-core i5 to replace that Pentium. I could finally run Team Fortress 2 without a CPU bottleneck and see a peak frame rate above 60. Now that I had a system that was vastly more capable than my previous one, I could focus on my own basic config, as well as get a better experience while creating videos. Eventually, my two interests mixed together, and I started to create videos about performance in TF2, and how to increase it with various config files. The topic had always been important to me, and the fact that I could then play the game without one still didn't change that. In November of 2017, I released a video about configs and what they could be used for. I touched on FPS configs, specifically Comanglias, as well as a new contender named MasterComfig. Cleverly titled after its creator Mastercoms, Mastercomfig had been started a mere three months ago at that point, and I was only informed of its existence when I was already in the process of editing the video, so I had to work quickly to try it out and add it into the video with my findings. The config was fantastic and had several presets much like previous ones, yet Mastercoms configs seemed to provide much better results than others, even if one kept the game running at high settings. I'd been experiencing stuttering after the launch of Jungle Inferno in October, but Mastercom config fixed it for me. I looked into the config further, and then amended my own with some of Mastercom's optimizations. I wasn't using the entire config, simply bits and pieces of it that would benefit my game's stability without touching the graphics. As time went on, Mastercom fig improved rapidly. Mastercoms had been hard at work for a while at this point, releasing new versions of her config constantly in line with Valve's updates, and paying attention to changes deep within the game. Eventually, Mastercoms released an alpha version of Mastercomfig 7, which is a program for Windows, macOS, and various Linux distros. This program allows you to manually tweak specific bits and pieces of TF2's settings through a nice graphical user interface, while at the same time maintaining Mastercom's optimizations and automating the whole process. By far, this is simultaneously the easiest way to install a config, while also allowing the most control. I've personally been using it since release, and I'd honestly advise any TF2 player to do the same, and I'm not even sponsored or anything. Mastercomfig is a seriously fantastic modern config, and there's no telling what's in store for the future of performance improvements. And that concludes most of the history behind FPS configs in TF2. The game has certainly come a long way since its extremely basic release, and configs have only gotten better and better. The only bottleneck now is of course the Source Engine itself, because- Oh my god, is that 40 frames on a Ryzen 7?